Splitting Hairs Free Salon Education Podcast starts now. Featuring Matt Beck, Christina Cavalcanti, Brian Hare, and Carly Wareheim. T- today's episode is powered by MinervaBeauty.com. What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 14 of Splitting Hairs Free Salon Education Podcast, powered by MinervaBeauty.com. Uh, if you are looking to upgrade your salon furniture uh, or your barbershop furniture, go to our friends at MinervaBeauty.com. Uh, they will hook you up. They have still their Memorial Day sale going on. Actually, if you go right now, because we're filming live, it's going on. If you wait till we re-put this episode out, you're going to miss out on that. So go check it out. If you do miss it, use the code FSE20 at checkout and you will get a discount. Uh, so go go uh, check out our friends at Minerva Beauty. And then also, just a heads up to everybody in like almost 10 days, I'll be in New York City uh, speaking at the Mevo or Millennium um, Mevo on tour. So uh, from Mevo Software. And I was just thinking about this uh, randomly in the shower. Uh, the Whoa. remember when we used to <laughs> Jesus, please tell us more. <laughs> I just wanted to be honest because that's why. I, so, when we used to do when I first started, <laughs> Carly has never even experienced this, but when Sweet Jesus. okay, in the shower, so, all right, come I'm on, we're getting weirdo. Right. So, um, <laughs> when I first when I first started doing hair, we had to use a paper appointment book. Did you ever use that? Yes, you did. Okay, so. When, and Carly doesn't know this, but like when you would do hair back in the day, you would have to fill out. Did you ever do it? You just know about it. No, I know what it is. Right. So, (laughs) but not only appointment book though, but you had to write down, (laughs) you had to write down every service you did. And then the owner at the end of the week would have to add up all those services and then add it all up and then, then create your check based on that, based on you just writing stuff down. So I just think it's crazy that like, you know, that that was even a thing like when we were doing it. Like, I feel like we've had software for so long, but it just seems. Um, yeah. Look how far we've come. <laughs> I feel like I remember you guys doing it though. Like, well, I feel we like never did. I but thought you. No, cause, no, because I begged the owner when when it was the salon before to get software because he was doing it by the book. Yeah. Oh. But how long did it take for him to get the software though? It didn't take that long. Oh, no. I remember. Well, I mean, honestly, the way that it ended up happening was Millennium had partnered with Paul Mitchell and then remember all that. And then, yeah, that was, they created that, was, that addition. That so, was a while though after. Yeah. So, I mean, let's so say maybe Carly yeah. was around the salon. Oh, I don't know. You might've been around she, the salon. Yeah. 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 For yeah. sure. Yeah. Cause I feel like I remember the book. Yeah. Cause well, it's been like almost 20 years crazy i know um it's crazy so anyways we're not we're not talking about paper appointment books in new york we're talking about talking about mevo software yeah we're talking about mevo software in new york and social media for all of you that are using paper books still no i don't think people are (laughs) that was in the shower thinking about you (laughs) (laughs) those poor that's how this day is gonna be that's how this day is going. All right. Uh. All right. So so there you go. So June 10th, I'll be in New York City uh, talking about modern day stuff, not uh, not paper appointment books. Uh, or being in the shower, hopefully. Yeah. I'm leaving that all behind. Um, As it's a bar later. All right. So <laughs> comments from last week. Uh, deranged Dollface. That's, a, that's another name that you can't get. Uh, That's like that dancer that was on AGT. A, what's that? Oh, yeah. What's that show? American's Girl Talent? Yeah. yeah. Mm. She was see, this crazy, you guys like. Even watch um, that show? Mm. We're old. What is it when they break their, um, they're like. Like the contortionist? Yeah, mm. like a crazy yeah. contortionist dancer. Well, she came out. She's super cute. She's from India, maybe? I forget. Anyway, and she um, comes out and she's like, 
super cute, sweet. And she's like, I just have to go get ready real quick. And then she comes out. Her face is this deranged doll face. <laughs> yeah. Like is creepy, like her? scary movie. <laughs> Could be. And um, and she's great at what she does. Like, yeah. Yeah. It was pretty cool. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. And on her off time, she watches this show. So love that. That's her in the <laughs> she says this was a super fun podcast. Looking forward to future content from all of y'all. Mm-hmm. Um, Doll. I feel like this our last show was great. It, I feel like it took off. Um, it had a lot of people viewed it. We had some good comments in the in the chat. So we're going to talk about a little bit of that. But we did have a comment on the show last week uh, live, and they were asking mm-hmm. what our opinions are. Um, on salon suites. So uh, I definitely want to talk about that. I, I know it's a popular thing. Um, so do you guys want to give... Who wants to go first? Talking about opinions. I, I have an opinion. Okay. Surprise. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I think it's absolutely great. I I think it's, it's, it's perfect for... Like we were talking last week, I had mentioned... That there's so much in the culture that like one day you're going to own your own salon, one day you're going to own your own business, but not everybody wants to. And so this is a great sort of middle ground. Like you get to run your own business, but without worrying about running a whole business that's going to have other people that's going to have, like you can do what you want. You don't have to beg and plead to get a new color line or whatever, whatever you would want to do different in a, when you're working for someone else, you just get to do because it's yours. I don't know the intricacies of like exactly how it works and walk-ins and stuff like that because I've never worked in one. But from what I understand of them, I think it's really great. Like I have clients that go to, there's one not too far from here. They go there because like nail techs have started taking up spots in there because they like having their own space. They create their own vibe. It, I think it's just a really cool concept. And yeah. if they had been around earlier in my career, I can see myself. I would absolutely have done, done that. Yeah. yeah. Tattoo artists too have started oh, really? doing that. Yeah. See? Um, I think there's like a rule that they can't have a door though or something that has to do with the door. But hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I don't really have like an opinion either way. I think if it's something that works for you, then go for it. But me personally, like I have our time with schedules and remembering and things like that. And I just think that would be too much, but um, yeah, I think they're, I think they're great. Yeah. And I think like I th- you and me are kind of similar in the way yeah. that we like, I like that Brian is two chairs down and talks a lot. Like I've yeah. actually been, I mean, I've been in the back room, but the clients that I cut now, I'm just basically friends with at this mm-hmm. point. But when I was taking a lot of clients, I like the energy of a room of people, people. Yeah. 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 And, and the creative, feel of that um if you can never find your spot i can see where like that connection with other stylists and stuff like you don't feel like you're on a team then i could see why you would want to maybe or if you're just more of a by yourself or want to do your own thing like i could see that but for for me i i like that energy of other people of being around yeah Yeah, i i think it's great that it's an option like the, the people that that will be good for I'm glad they have that because, mm-hmm. you know, like you said, some people will function better in a room of people. They like that whole vibe and and some clients, too. They like being yeah. in around other people and chatting and see people in the community and, you know, other people just enjoy the one on one. And then this is a, a, a place for them to go and get that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that. I don't have to talk to you over the phone like I can. I love front desk and. You know, I can't stand people over the phone. I get anxious over the phone. I just, I hate it. So for me, like, I don't think you're I not could a phone person. That. No, really? Oh God, oh, God me neither. Ugh. I know you're not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't like it. I'm pretty good. I'm fine on the phone. You don't really I'm call. Fine on the phone. Yeah, 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 FaceTime. You, mm-hmm. you talk people. Yeah. I think I think it's it's great, like you said, for some people. My mom was saying she goes to a salon and um, she now has a suite. So she doesn't love, it's fine, like either way, but it's a small room. The shampoo bowl is right there. If you have other people waiting, they're just kind of like right there. So the experience, like she relates to here how like nice we have a wash house and it's separate and it's calming and, you know, it 
so it might work for some people, but then others might not really yeah. love the vibe. She's not leaving her, but right. she I mean, it goes, would prefer it probably the other way. I think it goes way. back to like that conversation that we were having about just how all these industries are having to evolve to just meet different kinds of needs. Like restaurants yeah. are, there's so many different kinds, whether it's a walk-up window or a sit-down fancy restaurant. Now there's another version of this experience that people can have. Mm. Not everyone's going to want that small room. They're going to want the lavish, like get up and walk to a nice shampoo room and those options will still be out there. I think it's cool mm -hmm. that yeah. there's just another option now. Do we think it's as easy, and this is good for the chat too, or comments uh, later, but um, to be a high-end hairstylist in a suite, do we feel That's like how, so if I were to do it, that's how I would want to do it. Yeah. Same. I would want to have it feel very high-end, partition with my sink, Maybe or just have it all kind of a very inviting environment and own and price accordingly for one client while oh, I'm in there. hundred percent. Yeah. And have it be pretty intimate. Yes. And then then you could be a good people person and judge who wants to kind of be left alone while processing and go kind of. What find would yours a little... look like if you did one? Mm. I think that's an interesting question. Mm. How would you do it? <laughs> I don't know. I go through different like. V like vibes, trends. Yours so, would be so chaotic because of you <laughs> constantly transitioning to something new. So I you'd think get it right exactly now, where you like it, and then be like, mm, I know. No, I think I like these colors. No, so I think right. I know, but that's like till I find it, and then it'll stay that way for a couple yeah. of years. But I think right now I'm into like earthy tones, and but like minimal, like simple and earthy tones, okay. um, and not much of really much. Just See, kind of look pretty. The exact opposite. Um, mine would be like a big velvet velour plushy mm -hmm. whorehouse of just squishy <laughs> and textures and just I got scents going all over the place. It, it would be obnoxious. I have like two separate things in my head, but the one would be more fitting for probably the clientele that I would want to pay. Maybe that. Yeah. Brian's just stressed me out. I literally got chills. Yeah, I mean, like, you wouldn't even see the floor because there'd be, like, pillows everywhere. Like, it's a good thing that I work for you and you design this place because I, I mine would be a mess. Mine would look like my house. It'd probably be fun, though. Oh, it'd be nice, but it'd be a lot. <laughs> <laughs> mine would be a, um, a shit show, I think. It would, it would have look cords like and this cables room. everywhere. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah, like, yeah. I don't exactly. do hair. We know what your suite would look like. <laughs> Did you come what are, in? What are you here for? <laughs> do you, you, you wouldn't have one. Yeah. I'd have five camera people in yeah. there. I feel like ultimately I would want to be in one. I would just want to rent my own little space. I, I don't I don't want to be in a suite. I don't like the idea that I'm walking through and I'm like, office of someone doing hair. Oh, another person doing hair. Oh, someone's doing nails. Oh, someone's doing like it feels very like flea marketing. All yeah, like old school vibe. Like it's like you're going to the shopping malls that are closing down to go get your hair done. Like, yeah. and do you window shop? Like, what if the girl next door is doing a better balayage and you're like, damn it. Feels well, like a know? doctor's like, what do you office. Do like I always yeah. feel that it's like a doctor's <laughs> office. Like when you're walking through the doctor's office and they have like all those rooms, at least the suites that I've been in, I think I've only been in two, but they've felt very like- <laughs> Well, it's two, two more too many. Doctor's so. office like, like See, for me, your that, like, I- would like that just because I'm such a nosy bitch. I want to be like <laughs> looking and seeing what everyone else is doing and like how they decorated and like, yeah. oh, I'm going to take that idea. Yeah. Like, that's how I, when I walk through the city, like if you leave your curtains open, I'm looking mm -hmm. like that's. <laughs> but if the hairdresser's good enough, I mean, I'm going, I'm not like, for pick, sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, you and know. Are, do you think the people in the suite are like friends? Like sweet? <laughs> <laughs> but or do you think they're like just kind of mind their own business most of the time? It's like, probably a, a mix it. of both. Yeah. You find people that you jive with so that, you know, you chat. I don't, there's no like sweet bake break room or anything, right? I don't know. I don't think. There might be. I like a common room? Be. Common area? Maybe. Like they have a microwave and a refrigerator and a couch and TV and... Nice. Sounds sweet. <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding. I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> they all pitch in and get an extra suite that's just a downtime room. <laughs> it's a game room. A nap room. <laughs> yeah. It's lunch room. Yeah, I'm uh, not like for it or against it. it you know, it's I'm a glad good, it's there. It's an, yeah. Yeah, it's I'm glad it's there. I think it's a good option. Right now, but yeah. I'm glad it's there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I have yeah. nothing against any of that. Yeah. 
I think if anybody can figure out how to be successful, like if that works for you, that's awesome, I think. Yeah. And, and if this it's environment's great. better, then that's great too. There's so many people too, like I think my mom's stylist, she had went just from being somewhere for so long and maybe just the um, commission or even hours with having kids and they're different, you know, as your kids get older, it's like, it's a weird thing. Like they go to school and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I have all this time. And now they're still in school, but they're 10, 11, 12 and they have to run around to soccer, dance, girls, like whatever people are doing and you have to like revise your schedule. So for people like that, it's probably a like huge deal. Yeah. Blessing, yeah. really. Totally. Um, all right. So the only other subject really uh, to get into today, I want to talk about pricing a little bit. Just um, do you want to read, Brian? I, I know you were. Yeah, I, I was reading over these and there just seems to be like a constant thread through them. Do you want? Yeah, we can just sum it up or if you want to read the, the fir- like whatever. Well, I, so basically we've got a few people that have chimed in and I, I am seeing like, okay, I've worked. The first one is a little different and I do understand it and I can speak to it. Uh, Satisfied Sharon said, I worked at Supercuts for two years and they expected to do 20 minute haircuts for somebody that's a perfectionist like me. It was hell. And then she goes on to go into detail about that a little bit more. And as somebody that very early on in my career, like when I was in beauty school, I used to get so frustrated because the, the OCD per part of my personality needed that perfection as well. And it made me take so long to do everything. Speed was not a part of my repertoire at all working at supercuts and the particular one, I'm not speaking about all of them because I know everyone is different because they are, it depends very much where you are and the clientele that comes in. The one that I was at was a lot like what she's con- sort of complaining about that. It's not about the service that it's not about the experience. It's just about cranking out a haircut sort of like, yeah. you know, when you, stop by someplace for fast food, it's because you're hungry and you just want that food in you. You're not looking for a dining experience. You just need that done. Um, It was the reason it didn't work for me. And I think the reason it's not working for her is because she wants to provide an experience. And this is a corporation. They're not the, their, their model is not built on providing a hair salon experience. It's about getting hair done, getting that money, cranking it out. Like, It is jarring when that's not how you view things to be told just how many heads can you crank out? We want you doing four to five haircuts an hour. It was, you know, it's why it didn't work for me. It's, you know, it was two weeks in and I was like, I can't do this. This isn't how I want to conduct my business. But that being said, that two weeks, my speed picked up exponentially. You know, I, I learned not how to cut corners, but just how to be more efficient I only have a few minutes to do this, but I still have to get this job done. So yeah. how can I do that? Like, how can I marry my the two problems together? Mm. And I think really what it comes down to is if that's not the type of hair you want to do, that's not the type of environment you want to be in, then you just have to go somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah, and I think don't don't get trapped up in it because this to me is not, it's not that like, I don't think of it as an OCD thing or like a, I'm a perfectionist thing. It's a, can you, if you have to get something done fast, is it going to be good, good enough or are you really going to mess up? Because I think yeah. there's a lot of people that cannot skip steps in things. Like the way that they learn is like step one, step two, step yeah. three, step four. Like for me, I'm pretty good at like going step one, step three, step seven, you know, and like kind of jumping. Um, Cause I can do condensed cutting. I can do different things that, Um, my brain just works in that way, but people that, and sometimes it doesn't because sometimes (laughs) (laughs) I can feel you looking at me. Um, sometimes it doesn't work, but you know, or we just take the whole piece of furniture apart and then we have to go back to step three because we skipped it. (laughs) Yes. But, um, (laughs) with that being said though, like if, if that's the kind of learning that you need to do, like going to a different environment, like Brian's saying, like a different salon environment would be good. A sweet environment would not be good. Like going to a place that has a great base of education, uh, or joining, uh, and assisting in a company, which I don't know how easy that is to do now nowadays, but I know hair shows are still a thing. So just putting yourself out there as a younger stylist, younger in the industry, not in, in age, um, to help out and, um, 
learn from people that are, you know, good at, uh, you know, uh, just yeah. different techniques. I stuff. think it goes deeper than that too, because uh, from what I was reading, I think it's like there's inexpensive haircuts and they have to do a lot of them. Yeah. So basically it's, it kind of goes back on what we we're talking about last week about knowing your value. It seems like that company is willing to not make it more haircuts or or make yeah. more money with less haircuts yeah. and they're not willing they don't care and right. the there's value, like a, not like a thought not behind it yeah, yeah. Like, so whether it's ocd or skipping steps or not or what all that stuff i think it's more of just kind of them that's their business model super like if yeah. that's where and you, you are also, and right. they're just trying to make money it's and what it's kind of money hungry do you want? yeah mm -hmm. so yeah. if you if that's just such a certain type of business that you either know you want to do it or not or gain experience if they're just hiring you know yeah and, and like, i'm telling you, know, you right now if you're doing a 30 dollar haircut and you're taking an hour to do it that's going to be really bad in this in this business yeah so it's something that also like they know the model they know you need to do if you're doing a 20 dollar haircut you got to do five of them you know or four of them <clears> in, <throat> in an hour and the people that go there to get those haircuts know the reputation know the value of it they're getting a cheap haircut. It's not going to be the greatest haircut because it's going to be rushed. But and there's always exceptions. Like I don't some, care that much. Somebody might be yeah. able to give an awesome. There's oh, always sure. exceptions yeah, yeah. in For every 100%. industry. I feel like I could tear it up there. I wish they would bring back um, sheer genius, or you could still watch it because there's a, mm. a perfect example of this. What we're talking about right now. There was a, a challenge. They took all of them and put them in a mall. And they all had like two hours and it was who could make the most money. So everybody except for two of them were sitting there, we'll do $5 haircuts and they're just cranking, cranking, cranking. And I remember it was Tabitha who said, you know what? I'm not cheapening myself. That's not how we're going to do this. And she still charged, I think it was like 70 or $80 for a haircut and did like three in those two hours but made more money. Mm -hmm. yeah. She said, I know what my value is. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know what I can provide and I'm going to provide this. I'm going to take my time. Yeah. I'm going to give this. And at the end of the day, she was the winner. It's yeah. being I like self-aware and being where you want to be. And yeah. life's too short not to just start that now. Well, start that's your what, clientele I mean, there honestly, now. that's what got me here. Like at my, the salon I was at before here, I mean, other than you guys, but the salon I was at before here, it was starting to go in a direction and I was trying to, help move it. Like I wanted more education. I wanted a little more structure. I wanted a little bit more of a business model. And eventually the owner said, if you don't like how I'm doing this, then you need to go work somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what? You're absolutely right. <laughs> and yeah. right around that time was when you approached me and I was like, yeah, this is the business model that I like and want my career under. Mm -hmm. And so I made yeah. the move. I found what worked for me. Yeah. Sweet. Um, let us know in the comments. Uh, let's continue the conversation. I want to hear what you guys think about salon suites, what you think about pricing, and how how you guys go about it. Please get involved in the comments. Um, that's how we're going to grow this show, uh, and we love reading them and and building the next show uh, off of the conversation because I I feel like this show is evolving kind of into that um, that it's just a bigger conversation about the industry and what we're what things work, what don't work or whatever, and getting everybody involved in it. Um, we do need to spin the wheel. So if anybody's on live, that's a professional, uh, that would like to win, uh, some pretty cool prizes, uh, let us know. We'll do the quiz next week. Cause we really ran out of time. Uh, so the free wheel is sponsored by formulate.co slash Matt Beck. If you're looking for custom formulation, Go to formulate.co slash Matt Beck and you can get custom skin, hair, uh, everything there. And uh, I'm going to be meeting with him, uh, the owner of Formulate, next week to record a segment for the next podcast. So be on the lookout for that. We're going to talk about beauty school myths. Um, on the wheel, we have Mevo, uh, tickets to the Mevo on tour. Uh, MinervaBeauty.com is giving away some cool prizes. Uh, formulates on there as well for custom formulation. And then we got scissors, combs, tri razor, uh, Evo razor, all from Free Salon Education. So who who do we got? Patty. Patty, Patty Holtry. Oh, Patty. What's up? All right, cool. <laughs> Bye. Andy's got a broken rib.
Try Razor. All right. Nice. Sweet. All right, Patty, email me, matt at freesaloneducation.com. Matt at freesaloneducation.com, and we will send you out a Try Razor. And if you have one already, now you have two. Because <laughs> I think she might have one. I don't know. But. Um, all right, cool. That's that. Heck fun, yeah. Fun show. Time Loved to do it. hair. Yep. Yeah. You have a client, right? Yep. Yeah. I figured. You have a client too? Yeah. Sweet. It's Friday. Friday. <laughs> Everybody's got clients. That's why. Friday. All right, cool. Well, thank you guys so much. Follow Brian. Hairstyle. Carly. Hair by Carly C. And follow us. Everything at Free Salon Education. Thank you guys again. Get involved in the comments and we can't wait to see you guys on the next show. See you later.